Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. We welcome those here present at church and also those attending mass via live stream at home. My name is Diane Driscoll, and it's my pleasure to be your elector today. As Catholics, we truly believe that Jesus is present, body and blood, every time we gather for mass. It is Jesus' most wonderful gift to us. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Father Kevin, assisted by Deacon Eric. And our mass intention is for Fanny Shea. We have some good news from the Archdiocese to share with you today. We can now seat households every other pew throughout the church. Also, the mass parts can be sung by all. The congregation should, of course, continue to wear their masks during the singing. This is a first small step in a return to congregational singing. More will follow at a later date. This weekend's readings tell us the story of redemption and broken relationships, forgiveness and new beginnings. The ongoing misbehavior of humans makes it abundantly clear that we have never been perfect. But God keeps offering us healing opportunities, making new covenants when relationships are broken, giving us Jesus to follow. How do we grow in our relationship to God, even in our imperfections? Let us now stand and give praise and glory to our God. Save your people, O oh Lord. Show us the way to come home. We have been wandering far from your love. Save your people, O oh Lord. One thing I ask, O oh Lord, this I seek to dwell forever in your house that i may gaze on your loveliness all the days of my life save your people lord show us the way to come home we have been wandering far from your love save your people O lord in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ and with your spirit my sisters and brothers let us take a moment to call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son humbled himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. 
It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive any evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. a clean heart in me, O oh God, create a clean heart in me, have mercy on me, O oh God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense, thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin. Cleanse me, create a clean heart in me, O oh God, create a clean heart in me. A clean heart create for me, O oh God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O oh God, create a clean heart in me. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O oh God. Create a clean heart in me. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. and honor 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loses his life, lose it. And whoever hates his life in this world, will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was a thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may I sing to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Here we are at the last Sunday of Lent, and next week uh, will be, of course, Palm Sunday, and we enter into Holy Week. And uh, the church today gives us beautiful readings, really, to kind of enter into what is to come. And uh, the scriptures today, we find comfort, but we also find a very um, sobering message from Jesus himself. But first of the first reading in Jeremiah, we hear this beautiful passage where the Lord says, I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord. They will be my people, and I will be their God. Of course, that passage provides us so much comfort, recognizing the love that God has for us. Our God, of course, is a covenant God, and this passage really helps us to recognize and take comfort in the fact that our God is a God of covenant and that his promise to us to always be with us is something that he will never ever go against. It reminds us too that God is not for us just a legislator with a bunch of rules. Oftentimes, uh, folks can perceive God as kind of like a, a, a police officer who's pulled off into the woods and creating a speed trap and waiting for us to sin, to fall, to make a mistake. And when we allow that, that view of the Lord, of God, it really separates us from really what it is He is, which is love and mercy. He understands our sin. He knows our sin before we even commit it. But when we seek reconciliation and we ask for forgiveness through the sacrament of reconciliation, we're forgiven. Our God is not a legislator who wants to impose a bunch of impossible rules on, rules on us. He's a God that desires to have a relationship with us, 
of friendship for us. God is love again. And when we recognize that, and when we enter into that reality, we experience God's love, and that love is transforming. It's a love that transforms us to become the best version of ourselves. It's so important to recognize. In the Gospel, we see the Greeks asked to see Jesus. This is pretty significant because these Greeks, prior to their conversion, were pagans, and they worshipped pagan gods. And it wasn't that they were asking to see Jesus with their eyes, but because of their, their conversion, because they believe now in the one true God, the God of Israel, the God that you and I worship, the God that you and I trust, like them, they wanted to see Jesus in order that they might speak with Jesus. They knew in their heart who he was. And it was their faith that drew them to Jesus. Very, very significant. And of course, now we hear Jesus speak and he talks about this idea of the seed. And of course, if we go to a hardware store and we pick up a package of seeds, and this is a perfect time of the year, we put the seeds in the ground. But if we put those seeds in a drawer and we came back two years later, those seeds would remain the same. But when we put them into the ground, they die. And it's in the dying that life becomes real and present. That's why spring is such a beautiful time. We see the life coming back. We see the light from where we came from, the darkness. And Jesus is referring to his death. He is saying that I am the grain of wheat, and unless I go to Calvary and die, I remain alone. It will only be through my death that there will be fruitfulness to follow. And that, my friends, is the reality of what we will be celebrating during Holy Week. And these readings today are called to stimulate us, to shake us a little bit, in order that we don't find ourselves during Holy Week celebrating what is another anniversary, another time in space in our life that we celebrate as an event that happened 2,000 years ago. But the reality is that what Jesus did for us then, he continues to do for us now. And it will only be through Jesus' dying and rising again that the nations of the earth will hear my voice and will begin to follow me. This is a very sobering message. And my friends, make no mistake about it. Yet it is only through Jesus that we find a pathway to salvation. In 1 Peter, we hear Christ suffered for our sins once and for all. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. That's what Jesus does when he dies on the cross for us. He gives us a pathway. He refuses to abandon us. He, he refuses to allow our sin to define who we are. But equally important, my friends, is what Jesus says directly after about discipleship. Jesus says today in the Gospel, whoever lo loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will be my servant. The Father, God, will honor whoever serves me. 
In other words, my friends, Jesus calls us individually. And he calls us to die to self. The reality is, he wants us to decrease in order that he might increase. And the individual that says, I do not want to die to myself, I want to live for myself, will never, ever be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Our Lord becomes the grain of wheat that can only bear fruit by dying so that we can grow and be made into the bread that we will partake of in just a minute here at the altar. He becomes the way for us to return to the Father again. And He, and he stays with us side by side in the good times and in the bad times. Always with us. Always faithful always loving, always merciful. Jesus' love for the Father never failed. He was faithful. And like Jesus, we're called to be faithful. Jesus desires for us to be with Him. Jesus' love is a glimpse of the love that the Father has for you and for me. So my friends, as we enter in to this last week leading up to Holy Week, let us do an inventory. Let us ask the question, where are we spiritually? Are we carrying sins that we need to repent of? Is there a relationship, an estrangement of a family member or a friend where we can reconcile? Is there something in our life that has become an impediment to receiving the fullness of God's love that's limiting us from receiving God's love? And if there is, the good news is there's plenty of time. There's plenty of time to resolve it, to fix it, to get right with the Lord so that you, on Easter Sunday, can feel the newness of life that God so desires to give to you and me. Don't limit your love so that His love is limited. That's the message today. Jesus has done it all. Let's not let ourselves and our sinful nature our fallen nature, get in the way of that beautiful, life-giving love. And then we can shine in order that others might see the light. The best way to evangelize is not by what we say, but what we do. Attraction is the way that we draw others to the Lord. When they see what you have is special and comes from God, I promise you, they will want what it is you have, what you've been given. So my friends, let's examine ourselves this week and consider whether the limits of your love might be putting limits on our Lord's love for us. I believe in one God, God the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. It's one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence, we now lift up our petitions to our loving and compassionate Father. That Christ may form deacons, priests, bishops, and all the church evermore in his image and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may teach all nations and people, from the least to the greatest, to know his love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are serving in the military and are away from home, and all who are working on the front lines of the pandemic, may God protect them and bring them home to their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have experienced the effects of severe weather and also those affected by the coronavirus may feel God's consolation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may mend our hearts and give us steadfast spirits for the final weeks of our Lenten journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill and suffering may know God's compassion and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially remembering Donald Nason, John Chapansky, and Winnie Barrett. May they soon experience eternal life in the glory of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Fanny Shea, who is especially remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers and concerns we now silently call to mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful Father, hear the prayers that we voiced as well as those we hold in silence. We ask them all in and through the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. You are the Son of the living God. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. Lord 
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them, that by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that e eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Oh. Holy, 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood, to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. 
come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by this sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at last, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a safe sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord, not worthy Lord. that you should enter under my roof, but, but only Lord, say the word and my soul shall be healed. shall drink here at the supper of Jesus come to the feast like the child whose fishes and loaves fed the multitude in the Lord the little we have broken and shed becomes abundant Come, come to the banquet, come, come to the feast. Here the hungry find plenty, here the thirsty shall drink. Here at the supper of Jesus, come to the feast. Till the seed is given to earth, it is just one grain. But once sown, its death brings new birth. The harvest is rich, what's lost is raised again. Come, come to the banquet, come, come to the feast. Here the hungry find plenty, here the thirsty shall drink. Here at the supper of Jesus, come to the feast. In the stranger by our side, in the least and last, in the thirst for justice we share, Christ is here in the breaking of the bread. Come, come to the banquet. Come, come to the feast. Here the hungry find plenty. Here the thirsty shall drink. Here at the supper of Jesus. Come to the feast. Come, come to the banquet. To the feast, here the hungry find plenty, here 
the thirsty shall drink here at the supper of Jesus come to the feast We have a few announcements this afternoon. <clears throat> Registration is required for masses and services on Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday. Please check the bulletin for more details. Easter flower memorials are due to the Pastoral Center by Wednesday, March 24th for inclusion into the Easter Bulletin. Envelopes are available at the back of the church. We will be refitting the church to adapt to the new guidelines for seating from the Archdiocese. Please use the pews that are open and follow the directions of the greeters. The Sacrament of Reconciliation is being offered after Mass today, downstairs in the Immaculate Heart of Mary Chapel. Please use the chapel entrance near the Marian Grotto. Thank you and have a nice weekend. Before the final blessing, I just wanted to say how Grateful I am that uh, Deacon Eric gave a beautiful homily, and also I want to acknowledge our music ministry, uh, Cantor and Scott. This is the first time that we were able to actually sing, and I'll tell you, it almost brought me to tears because I've been wanting to sing those mass pots for such a long time. And uh, so I just want to say thank you very much. Beautiful. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy. Grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks to be to God. Please be seated. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the world. Lead me, Lord, lead me, Lord, by the light of truth to seek and to find the narrow way be my way be my truth be my life my lord and lead me lord today blessed are the merciful for mercy shall be theirs your in heart shall see their God. Blessed are they whose hunger only holiness can fill. For I say they shall be satisfied. Lead me, Lord, lead me, Lord, by 
the light of truth to seek and to find the narrow way be my way be my truth be my life my lord and lead